Biomimicry is innovation inspired by nature. It's, it's basically the, the practice of um, when you're designing something, whether it's a, um, a car or a, a plane or a city or a new camera, you say, what in the natural world has already solved the problems that I'm trying to solve? The organisms that we see on the planet today um, are the ones that have um, survived quite a, a challenge. I mean, 99% of all species that have been on Earth are extinct. The 1% that are here with us today have figured out what works here on Earth, the technologies that work and strategies that work, what lasts over, long haul, over the long haul, the evolutionary long haul, what lasts and what's appropriate. So what we can learn from these organisms and their, their systems is a way of living here that, that fits this place. It's about innovation for um, sustainability, certainly. Okay, so some of the some of the examples are are that you know there are scientists who are studying leaves to come up. Half of the companies come to us um, because they're interested in a sustainability win. They're interested in greening their product line, greening their manufacturing, or greening their whole company. Um, some companies come to us simply because they want a breakthrough product. They want innovation. They're not necessarily asking for greener or more sustainable products. They just want new ones, new whole new. I think we need a, a diversity of approaches. So we saw in this country for the last eight years, we basically had a vacuum in government in terms of environmental initiatives or sustainability initiatives or alternative energy. The government, ha well, I, I think, really abdicated its responsibility. Now, in that vacuum, into that absence, business started to step up and say, well, even though government is not demanding we do this, our customers are demanding it, our stockholders are demanding it, and our own employees are demanding it. And our grandchildren are demanding it. And so they started to step up and do voluntary measures. Um, communities, municipalities did this. I consider the opportunity that I've been given um, to be a huge responsibility. And I take it very seriously. I mean, I, as a biologist at the design table, um, I work with companies, and I'm I'm the one who explains to them, um, you know, how these geese fly, how they keep their feathers waterproofed, how they amplify their sound, how they um, uh, lightweight their bones, you know, and and I'm introducing them to to the natural world in a way that for many of them, they haven't gone outside in a long time. They haven't, you know what I mean? It's very interesting to have the opportunity to bring nature into Oh, certainly, certainly. Both, both in um, gathering energy, um, the biggest energy system on the planet is photosynthesis. And mimicking photosynthesis, or that's how plants pull down light, we're mimicking, mimicking it already in solar cells. But the next step is to figure out one of the most important things that I've learned is, and this is, this is something that scientists there's, there's this sort of revolution right now where scientists are beginning to realize that what looked to us like dog-eat-dog -dog competition in the natural world, that that kind of competition 
is not, we used to think it was just everywhere. Now we're realizing that, that what's really the dominant paradigm in most mature ecosystems like a forest or a coral reef or a prairie is not competition, but cooperation. There's a lot of mute, what's called mutualisms in a complex system like a, like a coral reef. Those organisms depend on one another, and they have what's called mutually beneficial relationships.